Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. We are discussing Module 7, uh, which is on CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Uh, in lecture number 3, we are going to discuss about the various applications of this uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology. To be in it, we are going to discuss about the CRISPR gene drive. So, what are gene drives? Gene drives are selfies, genetic elements that are transmitted to progeny at super Mendelian uh, frequencies, uh, which are more than 50 percent uh, when counted on the uh, progenies. Uh, we will discuss about the gene drives uh, with illustrative examples in the next slide. Uh, but uh, gene drives have various applications like uh, the potential to eradicate harmful disease conditions causing factors such as uh, malaria, mosquito, uh, anopheles, and reverse herbicide and pesticide resistance in agriculture and control destructive uh, invasive uh, species, uh, particularly weeds. Gene drives target to induce a trade that is detrimental to the species such as sterility whose population needs uh, to be controlled. For example, in a malaria vector control program, if we are able to induce uh, sterility uh, into the mosquitoes, we can very easily uh, control their population. CRISPR gene drive, depending on how readily uh, the gene drive spread through a population, uh, they are broadly divided into two main categories. Uh, number one is the high threshold drives which require many individuals uh, more than the number of native residents to take over the population. Then we have the low threshold drives which can be seeded at very low numbers to take over the uh, population. Under meiosis, the drive alleles are passed on to gametes making population to contain the uh, edited gene in a very uh, less uh, time span. So, let us uh, uh, see uh, uh, exactly how a gene drive uh, works and how CRISPR-Cas9 is used for generating uh, populations with gene drives. So, with CRISPR-Cas9, we can convert drive heterozygotes into drive uh, homozygotes through a two-step uh, process. Uh, we have the drive construct uh, here, you can see. Uh, which encodes a specific uh, endonuclease which is uh, specific to a particular sequence and this induces a, a double strain uh, break uh, at its own position on a homologous uh, chromosome. Now uh, it may undergo uh, two pathways of uh, repair either by uh, homologous uh, recombination uh, where the copies uh, of these drive are copied into the break site. Any sequence adjacent to the endonuclease will also be copied as well. If a gene is present, we refer to it as a cargo as it is uh, driven by uh, the endonuclease uh, through the uh, population. So, here you can see the homologous uh, recombination due to which the copy becomes available in both the uh, chromosomes, but uh, in NHEJ uh, that does not happen. So, this uh, population will uh, remain uh, uh, in its wild type state, but of course, in a uh, heterozygous state, but in this case homozygosity is uh, attained. So, uh, for example, uh, we have a population here uh, with a gene drive and we have a population here uh, with a wild type. And when we meet these population having the gene drive with a population having the wild type, uh, as per Mendelian ratio, uh, we expect uh, the 50 percent uh, inheritance or distribution in both the uh, population as you can see over here. But as uh, the generation uh, passes, you can see at the end, uh, it does not any longer get inherited as per the Mendelian ratio, but uh, the entire population uh, becomes uh, uh, homozygous uh, for the gene drive. So, that is why we tell that gene drives are selfish DNA and this is the super Mendelian ratio that we were referring to in the earlier slides. So, how the spread of the endonuclease uh, genes in a gene drive happen? Uh, when an organism carrying an endonuclease gene, for example, here shown by the blue 
mates with a wild type organism, the gene drive is preferentially inherited by all offsprings. This can enable the drive to spread until it is present in all members of the population, even if it is mildly deleterious to the organism. And this uh, uh, skewed ratio is due to the CRISPR-Cas9, which helps in uh, creating double strand breaks and also participates in the mobilization of the gene uh, to the other uh, chromosome. Uh, you can see here uh, we have a, a gene drive population with an endonucleus uh, gene over here and here is the wild type uh, population. So, the gene drive chromosome you can see here and the wild type uh, chromosome C here and the endonucleus X on the wild type chromosome partner it initiates cuts and as already discussed it can either undergo homologous recombination or non-homologous and joining. In the case of homologous recombination we have the drives now present in both the copies of the chromosome and if there is no any cut induced uh, we will have only one drive and one wild type and in the case of uh, uh, non-homologous and joining we have one drive and one uh, mutated target site as shown over here. The endonuclease gene drives are preferentially inherited because the endonuclease cuts the homologous wild type chromosome. When the cell repairs the break during homologous recombination, it must use the gene drive chromosome as a repair template, thereby copying the drive onto the wild type chromosome. If the endonuclease fails to cut or the cell uses the competing non-homologous and joining repair pathway, the drive is not copied. So, efficient gene drives must reliably cut when homology directed repair is uh, most uh, likely to happen. We have certain technical advantages of RNA guided uh, gene drives. So, you can see here the target signs can be chosen uh, to minimize off target cutting. We can have multiple target sites which increases the uh, cutting rate. Then the multiple target sites prevents the evolution of drive resistance alleles. Then we have uh, truncated spaces which increases the uh, specificity and using pairs of castine nickies instead of the nuclease as shown here turns off target cuts into nicks. Then generating blunt ends nuclease or 5 prime or 3 prime overhangs may optimize repair in the target organism. Activating or repressing key cellular genes prior to cutting may uh, direct repair towards the homologous recombination. Then targeting an essential uh, gene precludes drive resistance by making incorrect repair products uh, non-viable. So, with so many advantages offered by RNA guide uh, gene drives, many uh, uh, experiments has been conducted with potential uh, applications. Uh, the targeting flexibility of uh, Cas9 permits the exclusive selection of a target sequence with few potential off targets in the genome. Targeting multiple sites increases the cutting frequency and hinders the evolution of drive resistant alleles which must accumulate mutations at all of the sites. The Cas9 nucleus uh, can be quite specific in the sequence that it targets. Uh, fruit flies do not exhibit noticeable fertility of or fitness defects resulting from off target cutting when both Cas9 nucleus and guide RNAs are expressed in the germline. So, how can we increase uh, specificity uh, further? Uh, number one, by choosing target sites with few or no close relatives uh, in the genome. Uh, secondly, using truncated guide RNAs. Thirdly, employing paired Cas9 nicase instead of nucleases or Fourthly, utilizing Cas9 FOC1 uh, fusion proteins. Uh, several of these strategies can reduce the off target mutation rate to undetectable uh, levels. The frequency at which the drive is correctly copied might be increased by using Cas9 as a transcriptional regulator to activate HR genes and repress NHEZ genes. Uh, by choosing target sites within an essential gene, any non homologous end joining event that deletes all of the target sites will cause lethality 
rather than creating a drive resistance alley, further increasing the evolutionary robustness of the RNA guided uh, gene drive. Other options include uh, using uh, disting uh, promoters and guide RNAs to avoid repetitiveness and increase stability or employing newly characterized engineer or evolved Cas9 variants with uh, improved uh, properties. So, there are various uh, areas in which the RNA guided uh, gene drives can be used for example, in uh, agriculture, uh, in, in human health and in en environment uh, uh, areas. So, in agriculture uh, we can uh, use these drives for sustainable pest management or non-toxic uh, pesticides and herbicides and in case of human health we can go for controlling the vector borne diseases uh, as we have already told about say malaria control. Uh, by controlling the uh, uh, vectors, then immunizing aminal, animal reservoirs of diseases, particularly those who cause zoonotic diseases. Then in the case of environment, uh, we can uh, use these for aiding uh, threatened species and also uh, for controlling the invasive species, particularly uh, invasive uh, weeds. So, uh, the the potential of application of RNA guided gene drive is uh, really uh, very, very vast and uh, big uh, and this uh, is being uh, seen as a, a very, very important uh, technology uh, for the sustainable uh, you know uh, economy. Disease vectors uh, such as malarial mosquitoes might be engineered uh, to resist pathogen acquisition or eliminated with a uh, suppression drive. And while populations that serve as reservoirs for human viruses could be immunized using Cas9 RNAi machinery, again the reversal in immunization drives could help ensure that all transients are safe and controlled. Drives might quickly spread protective genes through threatened or soon to be threatened species such as amphibians facing the expansion of uh, say for example, citrate uh, fungus. Invasive species might be locally controlled or eradicated without uh, directly affecting others. Sensitizing drives uh, could improve the sustainability and safety of pesticides and herbicides and gene drives could test ecological hypothesis concerning gene flow, sex ratios, speciation and uh, evolution. So, we know that uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, is a genome uh, editing uh, workhorse uh, with which we can do so many uh, different kind of things. Uh, now, uh, the technology is emerging beyond uh, genome editing. So, what we can do with CRISPR-Cas9 or CRISPR-Cas system uh, beyond uh, genome editing? So, we know that major application of this technology is uh, in genome editing which are now getting extended uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, these genome editing uh, platform. Uh, Cas9 is getting repurposed uh, through uh, you know catalytic impairment uh, to carry targeted gene regulation, uh, epigenome editing, uh, chromatin imaging and uh, chromatin uh, topology uh, manipulations as you can uh, see over here and also uh, in, in case of uh, base editing as well. The catalytically impaired uh, Nikkei's uh, Cas9 enzyme has been used as a platform for base editing without uh, double strand breaks. In addition, novel RNA targeting CRISPR Cas9 systems has also been uh, developed. Uh, we know that uh, CRISPR Cas9 has two catalytic uh, domains the HNS domain and the RAFC domain, and each of these catalytic domains clips one DNA strand, thereby resulting in double strand breaks uh, proximal to the palm sequence at the target site. A single point mutation in either of these domains results in a Nikkei's enzyme, whereas mutations in both domains D10A and H840A for SPCAS9 results in complete loss of DNA cleavage activity. However, programmable targeting capacity of catalytically inactive dead Cas9 or which we call as DCAS9. Uh, which cannot cleave DNA, but can still be guided to the target sequence uh, can be exploited to design tools that carry out functions other than uh, editing. And some of these we have discussed in the uh, earlier slide. So, here you can see the various uh, applications 
uh, which we can do with the DCAS9 uh, enzyme. Let us start with uh, base editing by uh, CRISPR-Cas9. So, here you have various components like cytidine deaminases, then Cas proteins and adenosine deaminases and then uh, you have uh, here the cytid cytosine base editor. So, and the uh, ad adenine base editor in the lower part and the uh, corresponding applications like SNP correction, then gene regulation and uh, alternative uh, splicing. What is base editing? It is a process that allows programmable conversion of one nuclear nucleotide to another without the need for DSB or homology sequence uh, template. Cytidine or adenosine deaminase can carry out C to T or A to G conversion in genomic DNA. Catalytically inactive Cas9 or dead Cas9 has the ability to bind DNA in an SZRNA mediated uh, reaction and target specific locations in genomic DNA but lacks nuclease activity due to induced point mutations in its endonucleus uh, domains. A base editor is constructed by fusion of a cytidine or adenosine deaminase protein with catalytically inactive Cas9 or a Nikase uh, Cas9. So, we have two classes of uh, base editors, one is the cytosine base editor that converts C to T and the uh, adenosine base editors ABEs which mediate the conversion of A to G in genomic DNA. The CBE is employed DCAS9 fused to red cytidine deaminase APOBAC1 that mediates C to U conversion within narrow activity window. Uh, these enzymes can also include uracil DNA glycosylase UDG to inhibit reversion of U to G, US to G uh, back to CS to G that commonly occurs in the cells. In this way, the DCAS9 UDG fusion protein mediates uh, U is to G to T is to A conversion in the course of uh, DNA replication. We can see here the schematic diagram of a cytosine based editor. A Cas9 SGRNA complex forms an R loop uh, at the target site in the DNA. The linked cytidine deaminase converts the exposed cytidine into a uridine. An additional linked uh, protein UZI uh, protects uracil from uracil DNA glycosylase. After uh, uh, deamination, the resulting uh, uridine is read as thymidine by the DNA uh, polymerase. The artificial uracil deoxynucleotide created by the CVE system is repaired by two major pathways. Uh, in the upper pathway, DNA polymerase reads uracil as uh, thymidine, ultimately a T is to A pair is uh, made. In the bottom pathway, the UDG protein removes uracil from the DNA. The resulting deoxyribonucleotide which lacks a base is repaired to cytosine which is complementary to the guanine on the uh, opposite strand. Alternatively, the uracil is excised which induces the formation of insertions, deletions or substitutions. The UGI protein inhibits the uh, bottom uh, pathway. This is a schematic diagram of an adenine uh, base editor where this adenosine uh, undergoing deamination to form inosine which finally gets converts and converted to uh, guanosine. So, let us see that after this uh, deamination the inosine uh, is read as a guanosine uh, during this uh, DNA uh, replication process and you have this adenosine deaminase here connected to the castine uh, through a loop. What are the various applications of uh, DNA base editors? Uh, you can see here in figure A, uh, DNA base editors can be used for versatile therapeutic tools for disease treatment or uh, disease uh, modeling. So, here uh, a disease related SNV is generated as a result of this uh, base editing. 
In step B, you can see CBEs can be used for converting a CAA or CAG or CGA or TGG codon into a premature stop codon which abolishes protein synthesis and results in a knockout of uh, gene function. In uh, step C, you can see that uh, adenosine base editor can be used for converting the adenine in a start codon into a guanine to abolish uh, protein synthesis. So, either we uh, do here a knockout by creating a stop codon or we abolish the start codon and thereby uh, you know uh, abolish the uh, protein uh, synthesis. AB can be used for uh, converting a premature stop codon uh, into a codon for an uh, amino acid although the resulting codon is not always the same as the unmutated original whole protein synthesis is no longer abolished. CBEs can be used for converting uh, as you can see in figure G. Uh, G's within splicing exceptrocytes into A's by editing C's in the complementary strand of the target. And in figure Phi you, F you can see B's can be used for generating various substitutions for screening uh, experiments. Let us now discuss about uh, prime editing by uh, CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, prime editing has been developed to generate precise base edits beyond the four transition mutations possible in base editing. Uh, it allows uh, precise and efficient base to base conversion for all 12 possible variations including insertions, deletions and uh, combinations uh, thereof uh, without the requirement for DSB or uh, DNA template. Prime editor consists of three main uh, components. One, uh, prime editing extended uh, guide RNA or PEG RNA that functions as both single guide RNA and donor template for the desired uh, alterations. Then we have uh, fusion protein consisting of uh, castanicase case and uh, optimized Molonini murine leukemia virus or MMLV reverse transcriptase. Single guide RNA that mediates cleavage of non edited DNA uh, strand by uh, Cas9 nickage. So, the 5 prime of the PEG RNA binds to the uh, primary binding site uh, region of on the DNA, exposing the non complementary uh, strand. The unbound DNA of the palm containing strand is nicked uh, by Cas9, creating a primer for the reverse transcriptase link to the end Cas9. Uh, the nicked palm strand is then uh, extended by the reverse transcriptase using the interior of the PEG RNA as a template consequently modifying the target region in a uh, programmable manner as seen in this uh, picture. The result of this step is uh, two redundant uh, palm DNA flaps. The edited 3 prime flap uh, as you can see in the figure. Uh, that was reverse transcribed from the PEG RNA and the original unedited uh, 5 prime uh, flap. 5 prime flaps are preferentially degraded by uh, cellular endonucleases that are ubiquitous during lagging strand DNA synthesis. The resulting uh, heteroduplex containing the unedited strand and edited 3 prime flap is resolved and stably integrated into the host genome via cellular replication and uh, repair uh, process. The result of this step is uh, two redundant uh, palm DNA flaps. The edited 3 prime flap that was reverse transcribed from the PEG RNA and the original unedited uh, 5 prime flap as seen in the figure. 5 prime flaps are preferentially degraded by cellular endonucleases that are ubiquitous during lagging strand uh, DNA synthesis. The resulting heteroduplex containing the unedited strand and edited 3 prime flap is resolved and stably integrated into the host genome via cellular replication and uh, repair process. Another area in which the 
CRISPR Cas9 modified system uh, is used uh, is uh, for gene regulation. So, dead Cas9 could be fused with a variety of enzymes or transcription factors to mediate site specific regulation of uh, gene expression, uh, which includes modulation of downstream gene expression by means of transcriptional activation, which we call as CRISPR activation of or CRISPR A. Uh, examples are VP64, P65, RTA or transcriptional uh, repression, uh, uh, CRISPR I or CRISPR interference. Uh, for example, like KRAB cram and the regulatory proteins can be either fused to DCAS9 or to a RNA binding uh, protein recruited to the target site through interaction with a hybrid RNA scaffold uh, coupling the single guide RNA and the RNA hairpins. Uh, let us discuss about the DCAS9 mediated repression or CRISPR I in prokaryotic system. Uh, the DCAS9 alone uh, bind to DNA sequences to sterically hinder the binding RNA polymerase, thus likely stopping the transcriptional uh, elongation. Uh, we call this process as uh, CRISPR based interference or CRISPR I and works uh, efficiently in prokaryotic cells where generally RNA difference pathways are absent. So, plasmid uh, PDCAS9 uh, encodes. Uh, a Cas9 mutant uh, containing uh, D10A and H840A substitutions as uh, shown with the raised asterisks that abrogate nuclease activity. Uh, the DCAS9 binds to a tracer RNA precursor uh, CRNA and recruits RNAs uh, 3 uh, to process the precursor and liberate the uh, CRISPR RNA. Uh, the CRISPR RNA directs binding of DCAS9 to promoter or open reading frame uh, to prevent uh, RNA polymerase binding or elongation uh, respectively. DCAS9 mediated repression in uh, euclei uh, eukaryotic uh, system. Here transcriptional re repression can be achieved more efficiently by fusing a strong repressor complex such as CRAB or Kruppel associated box to DCAS9. DCAS9 CRAB can uh, recruit chromatin modifying complexes to enhance CRISPR I silencing of gene expression in uh, eukaryotic cells. You can see in this figure the strategies of transcription activation of uh, CRISPR uh, Cas example. Uh, in A you can see uh, DCAS9 is used to mediate the transcriptional activation of target genes when fused to small molecule activation domains uh, such as uh, P65, RTA and uh, VP64. Uh, in figure C, you can see uh, the depiction of the method for enhanced trans transcription activation through fusing multiple copies of VP16 uh, or a tripartite activator domain termed as VPR to DCAS9. P65 uh, is a transcription activation domain of the mammalian NF kappa B transcription factor, whereas RTA is an R trans activator from the Epstein Barr uh, virus. Uh, in figure D, you can see small conditional RNA constructs with different RNA hairpin structures or RNA motifs, such as MS2, PP7, or COM. Uh, recruit their cognate RNA binding proteins uh, fused to crab repressure uh, resulting in the repression of uh, target uh, gene expression. Uh, in figure F you can see the methods for transcription repression through fusing different repressor domains like MXI1, uh, crab and SID4X uh, to DCAS9. So, we can see that using uh, DCAS9 and fusing various transcription uh, initiators or uh, repression factors or any other uh, modifying factors, we can uh, develop so many different applications of uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, beyond its uh, simple editing uh, applications. Uh, thank you for listening to uh, this uh, part uh, A. We will be continuing our 
discussion on the applications of CRISPR uh, in the uh, second part uh, as well. Thank you.